very good afternoon. Welcome along to Crime Vlog Weekly. My name is Hartley. Nice to have you with me again this afternoon. Or is it morning where you are? Let me know. So we're going to be um, bringing to you some of the crimes that's taken place in the last month or so. Whether this is in the UK, uh, over there in Africa, Australia, definitely of course America, the USA. It's the biggest place for crimes. So. Uh, um, do uh, tune in Yes, this is my new t-shirt crime vlog weekly. I hope you can see it. Okay. There we are. If you do need one, please um, You can email me on that same one crime update files at gmail.com There you go sporting my new um, crime vlog weekly t-shirt or if you're in the US I think you call it Jersey as you know, as you know I'm based here in um, in London but you know our our stories cover worldwide wherever there's a decent uh, story about crime we will bring it to you so um spread the word tell all your friends and it's time for me now to get onto the editing suite and bring you the latest of um the stories around so um keep in touch don't forget to hit that subscribe button thank you very much <laughs> Okay, very good afternoon. Welcome back to Crime Vlog Weekly. How are you doing? My name is Hartley. If you haven't met me before, well, this is me all here, Crime Vlog Weekly. Okay, we're going to continue with the um, trial that's going on over there in Wisconsin. This is um, the trial, it's called the Apple River uh, Stabbing Trial. It's about a gentleman, um, his name is Nikolai Mew. That's M-I-U, Nikolai Mew. Apparently, um, it was said that um, he stabbed six uh, people on the river and one of them actually died. Nikolai faces um, first degree murder of the death of Isaac Schumann and four other counts of attempted first degree intentional homicide for the other four victims injured on that day. The Apple River is a part of the watershed of the Mississippi River. It issues, um, it issues from Staples Lake in Barron County and flows generally southwesterly through Polk and St. Croix counties. Prosecutors has asked the jurors to consider lesser charges since uh, the first charges came out. So we'll see where that goes. From my point of view, the um, prosecution seem to have, um, have a good case here. I'm not too sure if they're going to get a guilty verdict on this because there is a lot of um, circumstances around this um, stabbing with all the taunting from the kids on the river. Nevertheless, someone lost their life and um, our condolences goes out to the families of 17 year old Isaac Schumann. What happened on the Apple River? That's the title. <laughs> How you doing? This is the big case that's going on over there in Minnesota. The victims range in the age of um, 17 right through to 24 and were from Wisconsin and Minnesota. The stake seeks to prove Mears was the aggressor that day while the defense is uh, arguing he stabbed five people in self-defense. Again, we'll see where that goes. Here's a press release back in July 2022 with the sergeant. Earlier today, at about 3.45, the St. Clair County Emergency Communication Center began receiving calls, uh, 911 calls, of a stabbing that had occurred on the Apple River in Somerset. Uh, deputies responded, and as we were bringing resources to the area, um, reports were that a number of people had been stabbed. Upon arrival, they uh, located five individuals that were suffering from stab wounds. Uh, the suspect of that stabbing uh, had left the scene at that time. Um, it was not an accessible area. Um, it was. It took some bit to get upriver. Uh, the actual location is on. Uh, Highway 3564, um, what we call the Sunrise Bridge by the old Sunrise Park. 
Uh, it's about mile post number 9 on 3564. And below that, uh, up river is where the incident took place by about 100 yards, uh, 100 to 200 yards. Uh, deputies arrived, and um, with the help of uh, a number of individuals and tubers, uh, began to evacuate and administer uh, EMS and life saving measures to some, um, suffering a range of knife wounds. Again, five individuals. Four um, were transported out, two by ambulance, two by air, to regions. Uh, one was transported to Lakeview where they were pronounced deceased. From Minnesota, the other four individuals, I believe one is a female and three males. I do not have their location or their addresses um, or their home areas. Again, the, the deceased is 17 years old, and I believe the other four from the information I have thus far um, are all in their 20s, early 20s. Uh, the suspect, uh, after a perimeter was set up, we had called for mutual aid from a number, a number of agencies, uh, both within St. Croix County as well as uh, Polk County, Washington County came over to assist. Um, I believe Minnesota State Patrol helicopter was en route as well uh, in an attempt to find the suspect. Over my shoulder is where we ended up locating the suspect with the help of some witnesses that identified him. Uh, he was taken into custody without incident. Um, he is a 52-year-old male from Minnesota. There you go. That was the press release back on the day. According to court records, Mew was reportedly tubing with about six to eight of his friends when they came across another group, including the victims. It began like any other recreational event, but soon degenerated into total chaos and scare and violent confrontation between the two groups. As you know, the uh, trial has begun and there's lots of speculations about this particular trial this murder trial, I should say, there's lots of uh, speculations and comments uh, from worldwide, I should say, all the way from Australia, <laughs> in the UK, and of course, um, in the USA. So um, we're definitely going to bring you a lot of these comments. Um, so keep it locked. <laughs> Yes, that was the hustle and bustle on the morning at um, Apple River with those uh, tubers. And you can see it definitely uh, got out of hand. And yeah. one lost his life and six others got stabbed. But um, as you can see clearly, um, Mew, uh, 
Nikolai Mew was being harassed quite a bit. So um, it's going to be a difficult case for the for the jurors. I would not like to be one of the jurors in this particular case because it's at the moment it looks fifty fifty to me. But um, we'll see. We'll see how the prosecution um, tears into Mew when it comes to his turn. Yeah, we do have lots of um, interesting comments uh, from around the world. Australia, South Africa, England, and of course here in the USA, lots and lots. I'll be giving you lots more before the video finishes, so um, make sure you keep it locked. And another comment here, this one's by uh, TR507. Young people out of control, being antagonizing, mobbing, bullying this guy. Laughing, filming, and proud of their behavior. Disgusting. Then they get reaction to this guy's defending himself and the mob instantly become victims. That's uh, comments there by TR507. The previous one by, was by Alan Naslin812. Here's another one. Why is the translator not saying the exact word of the witness is saying? Seriously, horrible Spanish translator. Detail, detail are very important. Yes, apparently um, the Spanish, um, um, the Spanish, I should say, the sp people that was uh, given evidence that spoke Spanish, they all had um, translator, and there has been a few comments that she's not um, given everything that she should. So um, I'm not sure why that happened, but um, I'm sure they're looking to that. Here is this one by Fritz Jack 5121 They call it Apple River because so many people lose their damn iPhones. I'm not sure about that. That's um, his opinion. Maybe it happens. <laughs> I don't think so. Here we go. Right, also this one by Tony Wells 570 Who knows what would have happened if this man had not been able to defend himself that day? If definitely wouldn't be far a fair fight. I should say, it definitely wouldn't have been a fair fight. There were bullies. Another one by Allen's Allen's 812. Um, John Copfield started it, recorded and in the end proved himself to be the liar of his group, to be a gang thug picking an, on an old man. Okay, we're going to continue with some of the comments that's been um, flushed around across the internet and so, so forth. This one is by Alan Lena, 812. Imagine being accused of being a pedo, having the accusers claiming to have it on video, then having them yelling at you, mocking you, ridiculous and gaslighting anyone in the earshot. Imagine how scary that would have been with people around you, hating you for being something you aren't. Then, when the so called adults that showed up, they threaten you lay their hands on you and ultimately deliver a completely unjustified beatdown. Who wouldn't be scared of death? Okay, continuing with the um, comments and uh, accusations and uh, replies back to this um, event that's taking place over there. The lack of situations awareness on everyone's single person's part is astounding. Is this our culture now? That's by Jennifer Cowery. Once again, the lack of situations awareness on everyone's uh, singles persons is astounding. And she's saying, is this our culture now? Next one by Real First Stone, at Real First Stone. The male translator is horrible. He omits lots of Spanish words, especially phrases in Spanish. Translator seems to have trouble speaking English too. I understand the uh, courts have a budget, but lives on are the line, but lives are on the line, I should say. Once again, this one by Real First Stone. The male translator is horrible. He omits lots of Spanish words, especially phrases in Spanish. Translator seems to uh, have trouble speaking English too. I understand the court um, have a budget, but lives are on the line. Um, I kind of favour favour that situation too, because uh, 
only those that can speak English, um, speak Spanish would have known that um, the translator's not doing it as he should. He's not giving all the evidence as coming from the witness. Okay, here's this one. User C CZ6 SZ. I don't think it's a good, a good idea for the DA to call Mr. Mew's best a friend a liar. This man has no motive to lie, but the teenagers, but the teenagers do. They have answers uh, to their parents should have the, they should have made to pay for this behavior. Under underage drinking, possession of marijuana, or shall I say drugs, disorderly conduct, and uh, public intoxication. She definitely have a point there. According to the criminal complaint. Mayu claimed the attack was self-defense. He said he was so fearful for his safety, adding he wasn't sure what the people in the river were going to do to him, and everything happened so fast. Tony Carlson is the son of Quinton Carlson. He was stabbed on the Apple River, as was his younger brother, Dante Carlson. Tony Carlson testified on the third day of the trial. Dante Carlson, the son of Quinton Carlson, testified on the second day of the trial. He said he punched Mayu after Mayu hit Madison Cohen. He was stabbed during the fight, as was his brother, Tony Carlson. Riley Madison is one of four surviving stab victims. She was the eleventh witness in the trial. AJ Martin was stabbed on the Apple River and badly injured. He was the twelfth person to testify. He testified on April 3rd, describing his gruesome injuries in court. Isaac Schumann is the 17-year-old victim who was killed in the stabbing. He is fondly remembered by friends and loved ones. By Seashaw, um, she's saying, no, after the testimony, they changed the charges. <coughs> Sorry. What she what she's means, means there is that um, the prosecution, after their uh, hearing all the facts in the case, uh, realized that they're going to have a hard road to get him charged for first degree mur murder. So they um, decided to drop the charges to much lesser charges to make sure they get a conviction. And she's also saying this was insane. And also asks the question, um, can they do that? Can they get away with it? This is what um, uh, Seashaw uh, uh, said so she's not sure if they were correct in what they they did there by uh, changing the charges once they're hearing all the facts this should have been really made up by the um, prosecution department well before the court case there was a situation in the court yesterday where um, one of the uh, jurors actually fell asleep <laughs> It was brought to the judge's attention that uh, the juror fell asleep off and on for at least about one hour during um, the time they were playing a video, a very important video of uh, part of the situation that happened on the river. So obviously the, um, the defense, I shouldn't say the defense, obviously the prosecution was not happy on that situation. They were saying fair, fair is fair, and surely um, when someone's life is at stake, they should, um, the jurors should have full attention. I quite agree with that, but the judge listened to the argument from both sides, and um, the judge decided to um, not to throw the juror off the case. Not sure why exactly, but. Um, because to me, you know, uh, if you're not up to it, you shouldn't be on the case at all. Definitely not. Um, but the, the judge decided that um, it's not enough to throw the, uh, the person off the jury. So they decided to keep that particular juror. So let's hope he enjoys some more sleeping time for the next uh, couple of days or so. As you know, there have been a lot of speculations and comments regarding this particular case. And there's lots and lots and lots and lots of comments. I'm going to read you much more of these uh, comments because um, it will help you to um, make up your mind on this particular 
case um, and you'll see which way the world is thinking. As I said, um, people are watching this down there in Australia, South Africa, you know, on the African, um, the Northern African continent there. Also Europe very much onto it as well as um, in the USA. So um, listen up for those comments. Those are going to be coming up a little bit um, later. Um, I have already given you some and I'll uh, choose a few more a little bit later. Also, any comments on the on the verdict, you're definitely going to get the comments on the verdict from me. So uh, keep it locked to Crime Vlog Weekly. My name is Hartley and don't forget, hit that subscribe button below, please. Okay, just bringing you, bringing you up to date on the Apple River trial. It's, um, it's time for Mr. Mew to defend himself. He actually decided to go up on the stand and give his side of the story. I think that's a good idea because as I said, so many things happen, so much has been said. The only way he's gonna clear himself is by explaining how he claimed um, it was self-defense against 13 other people on the, on the river. The problem, the problem is there for him is that, that um, using that knife and obviously uh, murdering one of the um, people on the, on the river, that's gonna be his difficulty to get over that. So um, not sure how he's gonna defend himself on that. And not only that, he did stab another five other people, including I think it was two women. So um, it's, a, it's a hard road to travel, but um, it's all down to the jury at the end of the day. But um, good of him to go up there and um, understand and explain himself of what happened on that day. Today I'm actually going over to going down to London. Uh, it's a beautiful day today. I've got a few things. Um, as you know, I do um, a part-time job. That's uh, chauffeuring with a stretch limousine all through London and uh, the home counties. And we do have an issue on the limousine at present, so I have to get the mechanic onto it. So this is where I'm actually traveling. So it's work and play at the same time. Let's put it that way. So um, I'm just going to get the um, mechanic to uh, fix the issues on the limousine. Once that is done, I'll be back in the studio a little bit later on this afternoon. So um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right below this video. Also the like button, um, very important. We are trying to get up there to 50,000 um, subscribers from all around the world. So whether you're in Australia, South Africa, Canada, America, South America, I know quite a lot of you that speak Spanish do understand English. So please subscribe. Thank you very much. Speak to you guys soon. My name is Hartley. Out to here from Crime Vlog Weekly. As I said earlier, I'm on my way down to the mechanic in South London. I'm traveling from north to south. Normally no. I use the um, the tunnel, either the Rother High Tunnel or the Blackwall Tunnel. And would you believe it, today both tunnels are closed. So we're gonna have to um, divert approximately 20 miles more and head over the um, Dartford Tunnel. Such a nice day today. Um, all these uh, scooter boys are out today. We're in the area of um, Greenwich. I'm sure you've heard, heard of um, Greenwich Mean Time. Well, this is the um, this is the town, or should I say, the borough, the borough of Greenwich. We're right here on Blackheath. This is um, South East London. Still on my way to the uh, mechanic. It seemed to be uh, a fair. Looks like a circus. Zippo's Circus, right here on Blackheath, in uh, South East London. And also a fun fair for the kids. It is holiday time. Um, I think the kids are on a week, a two week holiday break. So this is why they've got the fun fair and circus going on here. Still on my way to the mechanic. Um, should be there in the next 10 minutes or so. Life of a YouTuber. 
over here in South East London on the way to the um, uh, to the mechanic um, who's going to uh, fix up my limousine, get it ready for the road as it should be. Seem to be some sort of incident going on up here. Um, looks like a, a road accident. <coughs> yeah, yeah, it's emergency Good. services on the, on the move there. <coughs> At it every day, hooked. <laughs> let's put it that way. Okay, we do have to keep the content going, and um, let's get serious. Let's get serious. Okay, the Apple, the Apple River trial over there in Wisconsin uh, is brewing up close to the end now. Um, uh, Nicholas Mew currently uh, giving his side of the evidence. Um, things so far. Uh, seems to be weighing against him um, There's quite a few comments that said there's no way he should have um, gone on the stand To give his side he should have uh, kept quiet because um, the prosecution seemed to be um, Digging in, into him quite a bit and he's getting very fluffle So I think the I think his defense uh, should have definitely kept him off the bench but we'll see which way it goes because um, it's all down to the jury. So I will be giving you some more of those comments a little bit later. Um, so strictly after this, there'll be a summing up by the defense and the prosecution. And the case will be then um, uh, put into context there by the judge. And the jury will be sent out to deliberate. So um, that's the big moment. So hopefully we're gonna get all that over to you. And as, and as I said, all the comments uh, for that. What is he on? Whoa! 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 So you're claiming today that where you reached down and grab at these boys' legs where their tubes are, that that was a stumble. Is that your story? You can answer the question. I, I, I know I hit a stone, yes. But I, I, I grabbed onto their uh, uh, inner tubes. And you know where you grabbed onto their inner tube is where two of these boys had their legs draped over their inner tubes, right? I see that. And you made contact with their legs, didn't you? I don't remember that. Did you see it on the video? I see it on the video. I don't remember actually making contact. And as soon as you did that, these boys jumped out of their tubes to get away from you, right? You remember that? Yeah. And you held on to their tubes so that their tubes couldn't float away. For how long? Well, I'm asking you. You did? Yeah, it looks like for a brief one second. And you were searching through their tubes. Or what? You walked around their tubes. Rather than letting their tubes go so they could get back in their tubes and be on their way, you walked around their tubes. So after my goggles dropped in the water, I went around their tubes to go to the other side and look for, for, for my goggles. Let's talk about your goggles for a second because you told the police, specifically Lieutenant Hart, that these boys knocked your goggles off your face and that you were looking for your goggles at that point, right? I don't remember my uh, interview with her, correct. But you heard yourself say it in the interview. Yes, yes. And in fact, that nothing of the sort ever happened, right? So the, the interview with, with, uh, with uh, Brandy Hart was not accurate. What you said at the time is what you wanted the police to believe happened, right? That's what I remembered okay. at the time. And from the video, you can see that you actually put your goggles in your mouth. So you have two free hands to be able to grab onto these boys' tubes, right? Yes. So you were preparing for your stumble before it actually even happened? No. You're running up. They're saying, whoa, 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 what's he doing? I don't remember that. All right, but you've seen it on the video? Yes. And then once you've made contact with two of these boys' legs and grabbed onto their tubes, they started calling you a pedophile, right? 
I don't remember when they started calling me. Do you remember them calling you a pedophile at all? Or do you just know that from watching the video? Correct. You testified that they were calling you names earlier, right? Right. And that upset you? It did not upset me. Okay. We've talked, your attorneys talked about your comfort scale and your fear scale. Let's talk about your anger scale, okay? At the time you were called a raper, what was your anger scale at? Maybe one. One out of ten? Yeah. And that was enough to get you to run up on these boys, grab onto them, stop their tubes. At a one. Is that what you're saying? Objection argument was not sustained. You don't like being humiliated, right? Nobody does. Your attorney has said that these boys were humiliating you. Objection at two years. Sustained on the form. You're claiming that you were being taunted? Objection. Did not testify to that. Sustained. Form. You had testified earlier that your shoes, there was problems with your shoes, but as you can see from the portion of the video we played so far, that didn't, those shoes didn't prevent you from running up on these boys, right? Yes, they did. That was, if I had better shoes, you know, I could walk better, but I, I could still walk. If you had better <laughs> shoes, you would have been able to run up on them faster? No, I mean, I could walk better. I wouldn't stumble. I wouldn't have a hard time walking. 40 witnesses testified during the eight-day trial, with the key piece of evidence being a cell phone video recording by one of the victim's friends. The jury asked to see it twice on the Wednesday um, during deliberations. Okay, we're now at the stage of the summing up. So both sides, both sides of the um, the court here, which is the defense and the prosecution sums up everything to the judge and it's now in the hands, it has now passed into the hands of the jury. Uh, so we'll see how quick they will come back with the evidence. Um, what, what the jury really have to decide is whether or not intent was there in the first place. Um, if they think intent was there, he's going to be definitely charged for first degree uh, murder on that um, or it's possible it's very much uh, possible that he can be just charged as criminal intent and I think that's the direction it's going to go <laughs> Verdicts read as follows. As to count one of the information, Isaac Schumann, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree reckless homicide as submitted. Question, did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count two of the information, Alexander Martin, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count three of the information, Dante Carlson, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count four of the information, Anthony Carlson, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count five of the information, Riley Madison, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count six of the information, Madison Cohen, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of battery as charged. 
Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. Uh, members of the jury, uh, I do have to verify that this is in fact a unanimous verdict. Uh, so I'm going to ask each of you if I correctly read the verdict uh, and if you agree with it. Uh, so when I call your name, uh, if you agree with the verdict that I read, please answer by saying yes. If you disagree with the verdict, you can answer by saying no. Uh, Ms. Navarro, uh, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Mr. Cook, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Mr. Snell, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Ms. Pelzel, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Mr. Wiley, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Ms. Knapp, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Mr. Diedrich, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Ms. McMahon, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Mr. Henderlong, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Mr. Ashland, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Ms. McMullen, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Ms. Lewandowski, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Any additional polling? No? All right. It is a unanimous verdict. Members of the jury, your service in this case is completed. Uh, you are free to read accounts about this trial. Uh, you are free to talk about this case with anyone. However, uh, you do not have to discuss this case with anybody or answer any questions about this case other than from the court. So this includes the parties, the lawyers, the media, or anybody else. If you do decide to discuss this case with anyone, please treat any such discussion with a degree of solemnity, such that whatever you would say, you'd be willing to say in front of your fellow jurors or here in open court. It is in the public interest that there be the utmost freedom of debate in the jury room and that jurors be permitted to express their views without fear of incurring the anger of any litigants or the public. For that reason, please respect the privacy of the views of your fellow jurors. If you do decide to speak, please only speak for yourselves and not for anybody else. On behalf of my colleagues, Judges Needham, Vlack, and Nordstrand, along with my courtroom staff, Thank you for your participation in this important case. Court is now adjourned. Please take the jury out. Well, 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 that's the verdict. He's going down. Not sure how many years he's going to get, but um, it's going to be a long time. We have got a lot of um, comments regarding this uh, verdict. So um, this one by LK Mojo. Congrats, you just created a mob of soon-to-be adults, men that didn't learn to um, take responsibility for their actions. So they continue to terrorize people. It was nice. It was not nice. They, they outnumbered him. Now he's going to have to spend the rest of his uh, life in prison. Okay, another one by um, NY6DR. Bullies destroy lives, even their own. And also we got one by Stella, Stella Christel. Wrong verdict. Plus the police didn't give him a lawyer when he asked for one and they told him he wouldn't be available because it was a weekend. Um, that wasn't good at all. You should always, always make sure. Don't say nothing until you get your lawyer. Okay. Um, what? Someone says, this anonymous 608, what? How is he guilty? That was uh, his comment. Also, Drew 3000. So a pack of hyenas attacked this guy and he can't defend himself. Also, Arlene Salak, 7456. Very stupid jury. Okay, seems that lots and lots of people are not happy on this verdict. Also, we got um, Devil's Advocate, absolutely, absolutely sacrilege. This is no justice left in America. Robert Solong, 5522, appeal, appeal, appeal. That's what he feels uh, should happen. And I think, I think, yes, there will be appeal somewhere along the line. But money talks, money talks. David Rubble, 7699, bullcrap verdict. <laughs> Also, Alex Braxman, 9270. So, no justice. Um, yes, so, okay. So, no charges for the teens that pushed and slammed him. Nice. This is America. 
uh, Greg 6353, what a joke. These are uh, thugs being drunk and high decided to bully this old man. Now, um, he's, he's the one who's going to suffer in jail. Tony Montana 428, the judge was in the tank for the prosecution. Uh, Sky Marco 123, how tragic for Nick Mew, he did not deserve this. Tommy Bay, no to self. Don't go tubing down the river. <laughs> Let's start that one again. Tommy Bay, note to self. Don't go tubing down the river, um, Apple River. Okay, he's basically telling you to keep off the rivers. Um, uh, if you don't want to get yourself uh, end up in prison like uh, Nick Mew did. Okay, bullies, thugs, win. Jurors, be ashamed of yourself. Miko San, Miko Chan, disgusting. This jury failed and justice was not served. Scott Johnson, 83. I don't understand how you're supposed to act or respond when you're surrounded by a, a pack of hyenas. That um, word hyenas, hyenas has been used quite a lot. Not so angry people. Another one, hello, okay, says, what the F? Also, Red Charm 173, Wisconsin. Wisconsin at its um, finest uh, defending punk bullies. Why am I not surprised? And then we got Crawfish 3284. I love the name. Teenagers uh, committed perjury, liars, and they got away with it. Mary, Mary Bulls, Bulls, Bulls. Mary Bulls, Bulls 1134. Jury got it two, 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 two wrong. Wow, he's got a lot of support here, but unfortunately, he's due to be sentenced in um, in weeks to come. So um, I'm not sure what's going to happen if there's going to be a appeal if he's got enough money to do that. Okay, Susan Hales two seven three zero. Unreal. Those kids should be held accountable too. They started the whole entire thing. They should have left the man alone. I quite agree with that. But at the same time, you do have to restrain some time. He should have taken a step back and go back to his group. So he will have to um, suffer the consequences of this jury's verdict. Robert Gosung 5522. The, teen the teenagers should be charged with the assault under underage drinking. Maybe that's to come. We're not sure. We'll see what happens on that. And um, if there is anything, I definitely will bring bring you that. On, on this particular case. Well, well, here we are at the end of the uh, trial of the Upper River. He was found guilty. I'm not sure if he was 100% guilty, but yes, he took someone's life and he stabbed six other people. So um, you do have to pay the consequences for that. I'm sure there will be an appeal on this. I'm sure there will be an appeal. Um, 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 I kind of feel very sad for him. He seems to be a nice guy, but he should have really taken a step back. You know, the jury only took, um, I think it was six, six hours to come back to um, give that guilty verdict. So um, they had their minds made up pretty, pretty quick. And of course, what helped them, the prosecution reduced the charges from murder, straight murder, to um, intent, intent to harm and criminal harm. So of course, um, he had to be found guilty in something one way or the other. So um, if it goes the way how they um, have judged, he will be spending quite a time in prison. Once again, I do feel but sorry for him, and I, our condolences also goes out to uh, the gentleman that died um, during this particular incident. Okay, well that's it from me, um, Hartley. Thank you very much for um, sticking along with me, and um, we do have another trial that's uh, coming up very, 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 very shortly. I think it's actually starting up um, early, early next week, Tuesday, and that's the Karen Reed. The Karen Reed trial. That's one that's going to be 
very, very interesting also. And lots of police involved in that one, so <laughs> seems to be a cover up, and everyone thinks it's a cover up on that one. But um, we'll be bringing you lots and lots of highlights on that particular um, trial. That's the Karen Reeve trial. So I, I did give you a pre a pre video before, so if you sort of go back to that one and get an idea of. Um, what actually happened back in, um, I think it was January 2022, January 29th, I think it was January 2022. But for now, I'm going to say bye bye. Don't forget to like this video, share the video, also hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much, and we will see you again shortly.